All right, guys, so we've had a look at this installation. Remy's given us a big ticket of approval. He loves the install. Yep, yep. But I thought I'd take the opportunity. Well, I've got Remy here with me. We've had heaps of questions coming into Suncoast Caravan Service, so I thought I've got Remy here. Let's ask him a few of these questions, and let's get the answers straight yep. from the man in the know. Yep. Um, I guess first question is, why have they done this update on the standards? It's been around for a little while, but yeah. why have they sort of brought it about? Yeah, so the last update to the standard was um, 2008. So obviously it's it's quite outdated. You know, a lot of technologies change from there. Yeah. Um, the big push uh, is obviously coming from lithium battery fires. Now, I say lithium battery fires, it's not related to caravans. Um, you're dealing with... Little scooter batteries. Scooter and, batteries, grey imports, laptop batteries. Yeah. Um, drill batteries is a big one these days. Yeah. Um, a lot of drill batteries catch on fire. And it's not it's not to do with the manufacturer or anything like that. It's that the batteries are becoming damaged or they're, you know, they're not 100%. Uh, yeah. And then you're charging them, they're overheating or, you know, whatever the situation may be. Yeah, the cells are not at their premium, basically. And then yeah. eventually they, they fail and bad things can happen. They're not dealing with a phosphate-based technology. Um, we're obviously dealing with phosphate. We've always done phosphate yeah. batteries. They're so that, was the, next, that was the next question. So yeah. Enerdrive batteries, what are they made out of? What yep. makes Enerdrive battery safe? Yep. Um, yeah, so uh, lithium phosphate batteries. Um, yep. So lithium phosphate batteries, they don't really have a thermal runaway risk at all. So, you know, thermal runaway risk is, you know, a, a, a terminology used for fire, effectively. Yep. Um, batteries themselves are not just going to spontaneously combust. Yep. Um, you know, lithium phosphate batteries, if they're exposed to flame, they will smolder. They yep. won't necessarily ignite. They yep. may excite a flame if you get them hot enough to gas, but yep. they won't actually um, they won't actually catch a light and be the cause of a fire yep. as such. Yeah, okay. um, so yeah, lithium phosphate battery is extremely safe. Um, one of the other things, obviously, you want to have a look at is the the certification of your um, your battery as to whether it carries your IEC six two six one nine. So that's a cell compliance, making sure that the cells are safe, um, whether you puncture them, rupture them, crush them, what their response to that type of event is. Yep, um, so it's just a testing procedure, effectively. All of our batteries carry that, so you're, you're totally fine with that. And something I've noticed, obviously, at Suncoast Caravan Service, we we predominantly do Enerdrive batteries, yep, but yep. We, we do get involved with other brands like yep. Red Arc and a few others. Yep. Um, every different battery manufacturer, they sort of have different yeah. rules and regulations that they're sort yeah. of interpreting with the new regulations. Yep. Um, the box that we've done and the install that we've done, we've done an aluminium box yep. around these to, to make them compliant. Yeah. What materials are Enerdrive recommending? Yeah, so um, basically within the standard, um, we have to provide you guys with a guide as to how to fit our batteries, what um, what material the box needs to be made out of, what ventilation uh, requirements there are for the batteries. Yep. Uh, and that box material comes down to your thermal runaway risk of that battery. So lithium ion batteries, that's all encompassing. So that includes, you know, cobalt, every other chemistry that's out there. There's a lot of them that are volatile. So, you know, those other ones that are out there, the battery manufacturer who's providing you that battery needs to give you that guide. So for us, we've got quite a comprehensive guide out there already that you guys are working to, which is yeah, brilliant. Um, as far as our box material goes, it can be pretty much any material. Um, yeah. So you could be using timber, you could be using fiberglass, aluminium in this case. It's yeah. all fine. We don't have an issue with any of those types because we're not dealing with thermal runaway risk with our yeah. batteries. But yeah, there's a lot of different stuff out there. And other manufacturers, you know, you can't just basically grab our guide, buy a battery online and then use our guide. That's not yeah. okay. So we stated in there quite clearly, this is for our batteries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every other battery out there, we don't know what they're made out of. That's why you can't use our guide. You need to speak to your battery manufacturer as absolutely. to what their requirements are. Yep. Um, solar is the other one that they've really narrowed down on yep. um, with this one. So what are some of the big changes with the solar and why have they implemented those changes with yeah, the solar? Yep. Um, so solar, uh, you need to have individual fusing uh, and an individual isolation point or fuse before it comes to the controller itself. Now, the reason behind that is if you have individual fusing per panel prior to them being joined in parallel, if you have a short circuit or something goes wrong with one of the panels, it doesn't have the ability to then go backwards through that joined parallel connection and yep. damage the other panels on the roof. So you yeah, can't absolutely. have a risk where one panel's failed and you take out the entire string, which can potentially lead to fire or other things like that. Um, so basically now, if we have a panel that is faulty, which is quite unlikely, but if it does happen, it blows the singular fuse and the yep. rest of the system still operates as it should. And that's a good safety measure if you're out absolutely. in the bush somewhere yep, and in the absolutely. middle of nowhere. You're it, not going to lose the whole system. You totally. Know, you may lose one panel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And for testing purposes, it's brilliant because if you're you know, questioning, hey, I'm not too sure if all of my panels are working, you can simply watch your solar controller, pull one fuse out and go, hey, that dropped down a little bit, pull the next one, it doesn't change, you go... 
okay, that panel's not actually working. Let's investigate why it isn't working. And, yeah. you know, it's making testing a heck of a lot easier, which is yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Look, they're just a couple of the questions we've been seeing yep. that are coming in regularly. If you've got any more questions, chuck them in the comments below and uh, one of our team will get back to you. Yep. Um, but I, I guess from us, you know, we're, we're, you know, working as hard as we can to make sure these systems are compliant. Yeah. But choosing whoever you choose to do your installs... Obviously, we want everyone to come to Suncoast Caravan Service, but if you choose to go somewhere else, making sure that they are they complying. They are complying, and, yeah. You know, when you get your quotation from them, making sure that they're ticking the boxes, whether it's yep. you know under a seat, under a bed, whether it's a fiberglass box, whether it's an aluminium box, making sure that that quote you're getting is to those standards and they are individually fusing those panels and yep. things for you. So, yep. um, it, At the end of the day, cool. it's for your safety. So, you know, it, it is best practice to go down this track and do yeah. the things that we're doing here. So just making sure that they are doing a compliant installation, it is incredibly important. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, one more one more question yep. while I've got you. Um, what deems a new system? So if we've got AGMs, we take yeah. AGMs out, we're putting AGMs in. If we've got lithium and we go to bigger lithium or anything, what deems a new installation? Yep. So can you just run me through that? That's a good question I got asked. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, yep. no, that's okay. So if you're changing a, say, like for like, you've got a 120 amp AGM in there, you changed another 120 amp AGM, totally yep. fine. Don't need to change anything in that cool. installation. If you're changing that from AGM to lithium batteries, you'll need to make sure that you're, you know, sealing them off, making sure that they're, you know, following the IP rating of the manufacturer, making yep. sure that they're inside a box, ventilated, etc. Yep. You also need to make sure your charging sources are capable of charging your type yeah. of battery. Yep. So you can't just change, you know, if you've got AGM chargers, change to lithium, you can't just do that. You yep. need to make sure that your chargers are actually suitable are for the yep. lithium battery that's going in there. Perfect. If you're doing an update, so you're going from say 200 to 400 amp hours, yep. We really should be looking to comply. Yep. Um, it is a little bit of a gray area. You know, yeah. if you're reading sort of in between the lines, you could just do the upgrade and you don't actually need to make any changes. Is yep. it right to do that? Sort of yeah, sort of no. I mean, for best practice and to be safe, which yeah. is what this whole standard is about, yep. we would suggest that you go down the track of making sure your installation yeah. is compliant so to the standard. We've, uh, at Suncoast, we've taken a pretty much a hard line to yep. it. If we're doing an update on a battery system, we're going to make sure it's compliant. Yep. And, that, and that's our, our general directive as well, to making sure that we're safe. You know? Yeah, it, yeah. Will, it will make the installation or the upgrade a little bit more expensive, but at least we know that that customer is safe yep. and the system that we've put in and we're signing off on is compliant. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. a bit of our... Absolutely. Sort of tick off on that one. And you know, it's going to come down to insurance at the end of the day, like it always does. You yeah. know, if they're getting involved and something was to go wrong and yeah. we, you know, we didn't 100% follow it and we didn't do, you know, what is better than the standard, then yeah. we might come unstuck. So. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, guys, as I said, any more questions, chuck them in the comments below. But thanks very much and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks, guys.